Maya Angelou once said, history despite its retching pain cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, need not be lived again. That is a quote that's highlighted in the building behind me, the Peace and Justice Memorial in Montgomery, Alabama. And it's a good beginning as we explore the legacy of Emmett Till. Emmett Till was born in July of 1941 in Chicago, a, the only son, only child of Mamie and Louis Till. In August of 1955, Emmett's great uncle, Moses Wright, came to Chicago to visit and intended to take Wheeler Parker, his great nephew, back to Money, Mississippi for a two-week vacation. and he begged his mother to let him go back with his Uncle Moses for a two-week vacation in Money, Mississippi. So in that August day of 1955, wearing the signet ring with his father's initials LT on them, Emmett boarded the train at the 63rd Street Station, waved goodbye to his mother, and waved hello to history. And that's hot sun with Syria and, and Emmett, you know, he, he he went to the cotton fields that Monday and he came home. He, he told my mom, he said, hey, Lizzie, I can't stand the heat. So he, he was at home all day. We picked cotton all day. I mean, what I mean all day, all day from sun to not quite dust. You had to have enough sunlight to weigh the cotton. And we, we finished up and arrived at home. We had supper. And then at that time, they, we decided to go to money. My brother Maurice was driving, 16 at the time. Emmett and I, <clears throat> Wheeler, a uh, young man by the name of Roosevelt Crawford, our, one of our neighbors. And we went up to money and Maurice parked the car. I mean, we was in money less than 20 minutes. I mean, people, what you heard in history is, seemed like we were there two hours, a lot of getting around, but uh, we walked over to Brian's store and Wheeler went inside of the store first. And, and then Emmett went in after Wheeler. And Wheeler came out. And Maurice sent me in behind Emmett to make sure that he didn't say anything that he shouldn't. Because he just didn't know the ways of the South. And, and the reason he did that, that, that Sunday we had gone to money and we, we bought some fireworks, which was common to us but was new to him. And he began to set them off inside of the city limit. And that was a no-no. So that was the reason Maury sent me in there. And while inside of the store, he Emmett didn't say anything out of line. Uh, there was no bubblegum stuff, you know, that we hear in history. He paid for his items, and we walked outside of the store. We were standing on the, that would be the south side of the door there. Uh, Carolyn came out, walking north towards her car. And before she can get off the little wooden walkway there, Emmett whistled at her. I mean, I usually I try to demonstrate the whistle. It was, it scared us half to death. And we couldn't get out of town fast enough. We we ran to the car and and Emmett saw our reaction. It scared him, and we got in the car as fast as we could and, and got out of town. So less than 20 minutes, probably 10 minutes.
After they fled the Bryant store, the boys drove away from the store and took a right over the railroad tracks toward Moses Wright's home. We drove about two miles. We lived exactly from the railroad tracks to our house was exactly three miles, according to my odometer. And about two miles down the road, Maury saw this, this lights in the river mirror. So he thought it was Calvin's husband chasing us. So he stopped the car and they all jumped out of the car, except me, ran down through the cotton fields and trying to hide, you know. I figured I could hide in the back seat but it was our neighbors going home. But when they got back to the car, this is when the Emmett begged us not to tell Daddy what happened. Aside from the overgrowth today, the road looks eerily similar to the trip they would have taken back to the house. Grover C. Frederick was a white landowner who sharecropped his land with the Crawford and Wright families. The Crawfords lived 100 yards west of the Wrights' home. In 1971, a tornado destroyed the previous home of Moses Wright. Mississippi at that time was called, quote, the most southern place on earth, unquote, in a hotbed of the Jim Crow segregation laws, laws such as these that required the blacks to wait in a particular room, this sign from a bus station from that era. Well, Clark, it was dark, and it's so dark down there now. I mean, you if the moon is not shining, you just cannot see your hand before your face. Just dark. And uh, so we got in and went to bed. And like I say, Maurice got in bed with Maurice. And Simeon, uh, Bobo, and Matil got in bed with, uh, with uh, Simeon. It was a big house. Everybody paints it as a shack. They insist on calling it a shack. It was a former landlord's home. Not that it mean anything. If you look at the house, that's a screen in porch across the front. That's money. <laughs> a full screen in porch all the way across the front of the house. Then you got four big rooms. You got a little space in between. The kitchen is off to the back. So it was a very large house. Saturday, we, we, we're getting ready to go to Greenwood. It's, man, it's first you secure a ride. Man, it was something. I mean, you have that joy. You have that. It's Christmas morning in August to go to Greenwood and to enjoy the foot-long hot dog, the malt, and go to the movies. And, and it's, it was something. From 6 p.m. until 12 midnight, we would be there in Greenwood, Mississippi, mostly on one street, Johnson Street. We all get home around the same time because everything shuts down at 12 midnight. And, and we went to bed that night. It's just like any other night. But then within an hour, a couple hours, our world was turned upside down. It was never the same again. I, the men, Cal and husband, Roy Bryant, J.W. Milan, they came to the house about 2 a.m.
geldi. The chef came and told me they had found the body at Philip and wanted me to go and identify the body, which I did. And we found the body with, with didn't have on any clothes at all. The body was so badly damaged that we couldn't hardly just tell who he was. But he happened to have on a ring with his initials, and that cleared it up.